On March 7th, 1997, Christopher Wallace, also known as the Notorious B.I.G., was in Los Angeles, California to present Tony Braxton an award at the Soul Train Awards. He was also there to promote his new record and new single that were coming out a little over a week away. He was supposed to, after this award show, fly to London. And if he had, he might still be alive today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Instead of flying to London on March 8th like was originally planned, Notorious B.I.G. decided to hang around in Los Angeles and do a Vibe Awards after party that would take place on the evening of March 8th. It would take place at the Peterson Automotive Museum and the show would eventually end up getting shut down early. The fire department would shut it down because there was excessive smoke and overcrowding. Now, there were a lot of people outside, a lot of fans, and unfortunately, there were also a lot of police trying to keep order. So there was just a lot of chaos in the streets with traffic. And while this was going on, Notorious B.I.G., his Suburban came around. He got in to the passenger front seat and they started to proceed on to Fairfax Boulevard. He had a Suburban following them with the security detail and apparently a car, a white car made a U-turn in the middle of the Fairfax and um, Wilshire intersection. And while that happened, an Impala cut through getting right next to the car that Big was in. Big was of course in the right passenger seat and the driver rolled down his window. It was said by people in the car that Big thought he was a fan and went to say hi and the guy opened fire. Now it was later described as being someone who looked like a Nation of Islam member that they had seen inside wearing a blue suit, blue tie, white shirt. And the car that Big was in after the shots were fired into the side door from a nine millimeter, the driver took off and the driver of Big's car took off to the left down Wilshire and made its way to Cedar Sinai where unfortunately Biggie Smalls, Christopher Wallace was pronounced dead. So of course his name, Christopher George Latour Wallace, they have cause of death, homicide, activity prior to shooting, riding in front passenger seat of vehicle. Um, have the decedent's hands been touched by anyone prior to taking GSR sample? Yes. Hospital personnel. Number of shots fired multiple. Date, March 9th, 1997 at 1230 is the time of shooting. The date was March 9th, 1997, 9 a.m. when the GSR samples were taken. And this was conducted by Carlos Garcia. Multiple gunshot wounds by a drive-by were the special circumstances of his death. He was, says, 74 inches in height, age 24. I don't, this says weight 395. That seems like a lot um, from what I had always heard. But eyes brown, hair black, teeth were his own. Says... Um, any scars, very sparse, marks inside forearm, a tattoo that said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And then it says that he was visually identified by his wife and mother, Cedar sinai Medical Center. And the synopsis was, Per Detective Felix and family, decedent was a passenger in the right front seat of a Suburban traveling northbound on Fairfax, driven by decedent's cousin, Damian Butler. The vehicle stopped at the light, is with Wilshire, and an unknown drive upon the right side and open fire. Decedent was immediately driven to hospital and later pronounced. The Department of the Coroner's transported the body and also conducted this 
It says, from the anatomic findings and pertinent history, or I ascribe the death to gunshot wound to abdomen chest. Um, it says there were multiple non-fatal gunshot wounds, multiple gunshot wound, A, gunshot wound number one to the left forearm penetrating, soft tissue injury only, bullet recovered. Gunshot wound two to the soft tissue of the back perforating, but also non-fatal, no projectile recovered. Gunshot wound three to the soft tissue of the left thigh perforating, Superficial laceration of scrotum, non-fatal, no projectile recovered. Gunshot wound four to the abdomen chest, penetrating, fatal. Perforating injuries to ascending colon, liver, right, hemidiaphragm, pericardium, heart, and upper lobe of left lung. Bullet recovered from anterior left shoulder area. Wow, so it went through the car and did all of that, that fourth shot. So the other findings were that he was morbidly obese at 395 pounds. And I'll save you some of the details of it, but here, this was kind of an interesting part where it said, medical records indicate that a bullet was found at the hospital when the body was turned over after pronouncement of death. According to records, this was given to the police. According to LAPD Wilshire Division, Detectives Chavez and Balderrama, two bullets were recovered from the hospital, each of which was found on the gurney on which the decedent was lying. The same detectives also reported to the examiner that the bullets passed through a car door before striking the decedent. Now, they do a very thorough description of each individual shot, where it entered, where it moved, every single thing about it but i think we'll just concentrate on the fatal gunshot wound which is known as number four it says the entrance wound is located on the antilateral right hip 30 inches from the top of the head and 12 inches right of the anterior midline it is a slightly irregular avoid defect measuring half inch by five sixteenths of an inch it is surrounded by a continuous slightly irregular margin of abrasion that is minimal posteriorly and largest in the anterior interior aspect where it has a maximum width of a quarter of an inch. The projectile follows a right to left, slightly back to front and upward trajectory through the abdomen and chest areas. It initially passes through the soft tissue of the right hip area with no injury to the pelvis, entering the peritoneum in the right lower quadrant. It perforates the ascending colon and the liver, entering the liver inferiorly and exiting it superiorly. It then perforates the right hemidiaphragm and the overlying basilar pericardium. It perforates the heart, entering it at the right atrium near the inferior vena cava, perforating the ventricular septum in the subvalvular area. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing some of these. Then exiting the interior left ventricular wall. The projectile then re-perforates the pericardium and perforates the medial aspect of the lower lobe of the left lung. It then exits the chest cavity anteriorly by passing through the third rib, which is fractured. It then perforates the soft tissue and, and muscle of the left pectoral area passing through the auxiliary area to come to rest subcutaneously in the anterior left shoulder. That is a lot of movement. Poor guy. Projectiles recovered in the anterior left shoulder area. It is a medium caliber lead bullet with a full copper jacket that remains open at the base. The bullet appears deformed at the nose. The base is marked LS for identification purposes and the bullet is placed into evidence envelope number two.